So we were coming down, that's the Highway 16 towards Jasper. We were coming from Jasper and we were heading down this highway and we came along here and we went off in the ditch here. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. This week I'm talking about my accident. The accident where I uh, wound up in a, in a wheelchair. Uh, this week, today, the day that this video is being posted is the 39th anniversary of my injury. Um, calling it my injiversary. I've heard people on YouTube call it that, so that's what I'm calling it. Today is my 39th injiversary. It's August 14th, 1985, and we're driving along the highway, Highway 16, coming back from a trip to Jasper with my brother. We'd camped there for overnight. I had a couple of weeks off from a job and I went up north to visit my family and my brother and I decided we were gonna go and explore Jasper. And while on the way back, we went off the road, right about there actually. So we were coming down, that's the Highway 16 towards Jasper. We were coming from Jasper and we were heading down this highway and we came along here and we went off in the ditch here. And you can't really tell because there's so many shrubs now, but there's a kind of a ditch there. You'll be able to see it in the police photos when I show you. And the car hit that and bounced up and landed right about there. And that's the view from the police photos. Here's the before picture of my car, and then the after pictures are the police photos. Last year I took a trip to Jasper and McBride, which is where my accident happened. It happened just outside of McBride at Dunster, BC. And uh, I went to the hospital where they took me to, the first hospital that they took me to. It was uh, McBride Hospital, and this is a picture of it. And then this other picture is um, like the sort of in the corner there is where the emergency entrance is and they took me that's where they backed into and I kind of have vague recollection of that it kind of looks familiar when I was there so this is the hospital that they brought me to first McBride Hospital So McBride was way too small of a hospital to deal with the, the type of injuries that I had. So they took me by ambulance to Prince George and there they decided that I needed to be on what's called the spinal cord unit in Vancouver. So they flew me down there. Um, once I got there, they put me on this thing called a striker frame. And it was a thing where I had to get flipped every, uh, I think it was every four hours. And so they would have me lying on my tummy on a sort of a stretcher type thing. And then after about four hours, they would take the exact same type of thing, strap it over my back and strap it all together. And then they would crank me with a crank and uh, flip me over. And then they'd take the part that had been on my tummy away and I would lie on my back for four hours. And then they'd reverse the whole process so that I'd be lying on my tummy again for four hours. The whole thing was because I wasn't able to move around. Um, they wanted to keep my back still and it was to keep me from getting pressure sores. So that was that. And then these are the actual Harrington rods that were put in my back, these little steel things. And they were put in to stabilize my back. I had them removed two years later because they were bothering me. But uh, that's what they put in to 
keep my back stable while it healed. And also, while I was in the hospital, they discovered, took about two weeks, but they, because I kept complaining that my wrist was sore. And finally, they took me for an x-ray and discovered that that had also been broken. So first time in, ever in my life, I had a cast on my arm as well. And I'm not sure, I know I didn't have a trach, you know, like one of those things that they put in your throat to um, help you breathe. I didn't have that, but they must have had a mask on me or something because, <coughs> excuse me, at first, because I um, I couldn't talk and I had to make notes, write notes to people to um, talk to them. Actually, I remember what it was when I was first taken down to Vancouver. I was in the ICU for the first day or so, and they gave me some blood, a transfusion, and I don't know why they did that, because I didn't have, I wasn't losing blood for any reason, like I didn't have any wounds, maybe on my head, I have a dent in my forehead from <laughs> where I banged my head on the dashboard, but um, I reacted to blood anyways that they were giving me. And I, my lungs all filled up with air and I nearly died. That was the only time that I nearly died. It was the closest I came <laughs> um, during this whole process. But anyways, I guess after that, they had a mask on me. And so I had to use notes to talk to people. So here's one of the notes that, uh, that I used. So I'm still parked beside the road where the car went in the ditch and I feel like I was so busy trying to film and figure out what I wanted to get and for filming and whatever and that I didn't actually take time to think about this is literally the spot in my life that changed my life for 40 almost 40 years and so I really feel like I should have just sat here for a minute and kind of contemplated and yet I don't know I think I'll keep driving and I will contemplate as I drive. Okay, just got back in the car from being on the side of the highway where my accident was. My face is all red because it's like 32 degrees up here in the north where I don't remember, I grew up a little further north than this, but I don't remember growing up having it be this hot. Uh, anyways, it's warm. Um, and I've just finished videotaping on the side of the highway and it just because my accident was so long ago I don't really think about it that much anymore and I actually don't even think about myself as a walking person anymore I used to um, for years when I would dream or think about being somewhere I was always walking but now uh, I've spent I think it's 30, 38 years next month in a wheelchair and only 24 walking. So um, we're getting close to double my life in a wheelchair. So obviously it's going to be very normal and not something that I really contemplate a lot. Although I do contemplate things when things get difficult, like something's not accessible and it kind of ticks me off or whatever. But uh, yeah, it, it really... You know, as far as the whole contemplation thing, you know, parking beside the, hope this noise doesn't bother, you need the AC on. Um, the whole contemplation thing, this has never been a really terrible thing in my life. Yes, it's been hard lots of times, and sometimes it's been really hard, but I mean, that's life anyways, right? Life sometimes is hard, and sometimes it's really easy. And if I had to say, uh, for me, not being able to walk and the changes that that has brought in my life and at the time that it happened has been really good, like really good. Um, I've enjoyed my life immensely. Sounds like I'm ready to get ready to pack it in, but I'm not. 62 almost 63 uh, yeah it's um it's been a really good thing and all the things that I've done in my life probably wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't broken my back uh, 
I hurt myself at a time when Rick Hansen was just leaving to go around the world in his wheelchair and raise funds and awareness for spinal cord injury. And what he did was really did create awareness so that it is so much easier. Um, I can see huge differences as a person living in a wheelchair from now to back then in 1985 when it happened. Um, back then I would take people with me everywhere I went because even though I lived in the city where things should have been very uh, accessible, there was not curb cuts everywhere. So I might, I wanted to go shop. I just remember one time trying to go shopping on 4th Avenue in, in Kits in Vancouver. And I sometimes had to stay out on the street because I couldn't get up the curb or my friend would have to bump me up and then, you know, that gets old quick, but anyways, I guess I'm kind of babbling because I'm trying to think of something to say about this, but you know, I've been a little bit teary today. I got teary. Actually, I'm going to turn this off and, and start again or start with another story as soon as I turn it back on again. So today when we were in McBride, I found the hospital that they took me to. Um, so the first thing they did was they got me out of the car very gently and carefully. I was worried because I kind of knew you weren't supposed to move a person that had a spinal cord injury and I knew I had a spinal cord injury. Um, I couldn't feel my legs and I was pretty sure I wasn't going to walk again. Anyways, very carefully got me into the car, took me to McBride to the emergency ward there and while I was there at the hospital there was an ambulance driving away and he wasn't um, like he didn't have his lights on and it didn't look like he was in a hurry so I waved him over and he stopped and we got talking and there's a possibility <laughs> that the guy that was driving that ambulance is the one that got me out of the car. I just asked him how long he'd been working here and um, told him that I'd had the accident. I wanted to know if this was the same hospital that had been um, accepting people back in 1985 and he said it was and um, and I asked him how long he'd been working in McBride as, as a paramedic and he's he said well since 1983 and I said well he very well could have been one of the ones that helped me get out of the car so I told him my name and he's like oh, maybe you know it sounds kind of familiar um, it just it was really it was really um I don't know, it was just kind of neat to be able to talk to somebody who did that job and who would have done it way back then. Uh, yeah, I, I actually am going to look up, like, because I have most, if not all, the records of my accident. There was a trial um, to go to court to collect my insurance, and so there's a whole trial book that maybe his name is in, or I'm, maybe I'm able to find out who the ambulance attendants were. So that, that was... <laughs> That was amazing. That that got me all teary too. <laughs> and well, you'll see. I'm, I've got a picture that I'll put up now. Um, I managed. I went into the emergency ward. You had to ring a bell at the hospital, and I didn't want to bother anybody. But the other door, I think it's a care home or something, um, for the rest of the building. The other door was open, so I just thought, well, I'm just going to go in and see if there's anybody around to talk to. There was nobody around to talk to, but I managed to get in. I went over where I thought the emergency room was and found, I'm certain, the exact same room that they brought me into. Because there are some small details that I remember, not much, but the size of the room and that there was two stretchers in there. And you can see from the picture that that's what this room is. And this hospital so very obviously has never had funding for um, updates because it looks, the date, like the, the decor looks to be from the 70s or 60s even, um, the tile floor, patchwork tile floor and all that. So I'm pretty sure that what I took a picture of is where they took me into. So just before my accident, I had been on a trip, um, just an overnight trip to Jasper from my hometown. And we did some of the sites and looked around. And then the day that we left to go back home again, uh, we decided to go up the Jasper Sky Trail. And uh, so I'm going back to that now. 
we went up the Sky Tram, and it was August 14th, and it was snowing and blizzarding up there, and we were in our summer clothes, flip-flops, whatever, and so we poked our nose out of the Sky Tram, and we got back on and went right back down again, but the reason I want to go up here is because this is actually the very last place that I ever walked on Earth. So I just kind of, I don't know, just seemed like a good thing to do for the video. top of Whistler, are we at Whistler Mountain? Whistler Mountain. And this is where the Jasper Sky Tram comes to. This is the very last place that I walked on earth. We came up here. It was blizzarding. We turned around and we got right back on the tram and went right back down again. Mm -hmm. 